Yeah, back on the Sportsman Zone and we begin with cricket. 14 years after hosting the T20 World Cup for the first time ever, the Caribbean will again welcome the ICC tournament to the region in 2024. Cricket West Indies on Friday, in conjunction with the International Cricket Council, announced the seven Caribbean countries that will join U.S. states, New York, Florida and Dallas as hosts. They are Antigua and Barbuda, Barbados, Dominica, Guyana, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Trinidad and Tobago. To further discuss the latest developments is Cricket West Indies CEO, Johnny Grave. Johnny, welcome to the Sportsmac Zone. It's a pleasure to have you for the first time since we've moved into this new space. I hope you are well. I am, yes, thank you. On my way to Ghana for the CPL final, so I've made it halfway and I'm in Trinidad. But, yeah, looking forward to a blockbuster weekend of sport. Sounding amazing. Lance and I quite envy you, to be honest. We wish we were on our way to Guyana as well for uh, a weekend of Carnival and CPL. It doesn't get much better than that. Probably will get better for the Cricket World Cup next year. Um, seven Caribbean territories um, selected. Um, to be part of the hosting of the event. Can you break down for us in terms of how the process went, the details of the process, and how you came to this final decision? Yeah, look, it's a, it's a landmark day for us, really announcing and confirming those seven host countries, a really important uh, part of, uh, of the build-up and planning to this huge event that we're hosting. Um, we started, obviously, when we were uh, awarded the, the co-hosting with the United States of America for this event, uh, well over a year ago, and the planning has, has never really stopped. So we've invited all of the, the governments of, of the 10 countries that have internationally accredited venues um, to submit bids. And that process of evaluation, along with numerous site visits by Cricket West Indies personnel, along with those of the ICC, um, we've been in, in long, long and uh, uh, interesting discussions with all the host governments. Seven of our um, governments put forward um, compelling bids, so much so that all seven have been awarded um, the opportunity to host matches. So it's a really exciting moment for us. And, um, yeah, we can't wait really now to, you know, the next big announcement, which will be the match schedule and then getting on sale with tickets and inviting everyone to, to flock to the Caribbean uh, in particular to watch this, uh, this huge event. Yeah, Johnny, a number of reports coming out. Well, first of all, it, it's set to be a massive event. Um, it has been described as the biggest T20 World Cup ever, some 20 teams. There will be 55 matches over the course of the tournament from the 4th to the 30th of June in 2024. I've read a number of reports suggesting that Kensington Oval um, is the front runner to host the final of the tournament. I've also seen a report that suggested the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Trinidad and Tobago um, is among the contenders to host the final as well. Is there anything that you can give us in that regard in terms of where particular matches will be and specifically um, the, 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 the final? I can't give you that exclusive, I'm afraid. We're still in discussions with our, our counterparts at the ICC, but um, certainly we, what we have identified is uh, Guyana, um, Barbados and Trinidad as the three venues that will host those latter stages of semi-finals and finals. Um, we hope that within um, about two months from now, we'll, we'll confirm the exact tournament um, structure, every single match, every single time slot. And that really coincides with the ICC board meetings that are taking place around the 50 over World Cup uh, final in mid-November. So once the ICC board approve that match schedule, uh, we'll be making an announcement immediately, I would imagine, following that final in Ahmedabad uh, in mid-November when the 50 over World Cup is, is completed. So are you suggesting that um, in a report that we've seen that says the final will be at Kensington Oval or the Brian Lara Cricket Academy is premature? It is. Uh, as I said, Guyana is also in the mix for those latter stages. So between Guyana, Trinidad and Barbados, they will be hosting those final three matches. 
Uh, we're not going to have a semi-final and final at the same venue. We've agreed with the ICC that there will be separate semi-final venues and a separate venue for the final. Yeah, Johnny, the Caribbean hosted 2007 50 over Cricket World Cup and the 2010 T20 World Cup. Um, how much of uh, that experience from all of the hosting territories would have you know, supported them being uh, impressive hosts for this 2024 T20 World Cup? Yeah, look, I think we've got um, huge experience of hosting uh, ICC events as well as regularly hosting international cricket and tournaments like the CPL that's currently ongoing. And I think that does put us in a, in a very strong position. We very successfully hosted in recent times the 2018 Women's T20 World Cup uh, and, and more recently in January of 2022, the, the ICC Under-19 Men's uh, Cricket World Cup. So we have enormous support from all stakeholders, but particularly those governments who, who fulfil all of the obligations that ICC require in order to, to host events. And um, yeah, the bids that we've submitted uh, through to the ICC um, have some really important um, development opportunities as well in terms of upgrading our stadiums and particularly upgrading our practice facilities uh, to the level that they need to be to, to accommodate 20 teams who all need, need to practice and prepare for uh, this really important World Cup. Yeah, in recent months, there were some stories which were refuted that the USA leg of, the, of this tournament could have been in, in some trouble, but they were constantly refuted by the ICC and, and organizers on a whole. Um, having said that, um, is there anything impressive that you can tell us about Dallas, Florida, and New York, the venues that will be hosting matches in the T20 World Cup? Yeah, look, I think it's fair to say we've probably spent more time trying to identify the venues in the US as we have in the Caribbean because we're blessed with, as I said, 10 stadiums here that are regularly hosting international cricket and major events, whereas the US, we've obviously been to the Broward Stadium in Lauderhill, Florida, a number of times and, and most recently taking India T20s there. So we know that that stadium in Broward uh, County very, very well. Uh, Grand Prairie is a, is a former minor league baseball ground that was repurposed and redeveloped for Major League Cricket that, that took place in, in, in um, both Dallas and Morrisville um, this summer in July. So Dallas has now hosted top grade um, uh, franchise cricket in the T20 formats yet to host an international. So those two, two grounds, I guess, are, are reasonably well known and, and have hosted cricket before. Uh, the stadium in New York is, is, um, is not a stadium um, at the moment. It's, it's a park in Nassau County. And um, it's had lots of experience hosting major events. It's, it's the venue for the 2025 Ryder Cup. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that ground is going to be built between now and June. It's going to be completely temporary build, um, looking at 34,000 seats. And we have been looking from East Coast throughout the United States and, and the West Coast and trying to find uh, opportunities and venues for cricket. Um, and these are the three that have come through that process. Um, so it's exciting that we'll be going to yeah, Dallas, Florida and New York um, in the early part of the tournament before it all moves down to the Caribbean that will exclusively host the Super 8 stages, the semi-finals and the final. Yeah, the ICC CEO, um, Jeff Allardyce, was quoted in, in a report today that he expects the New York venue to be stunning. That's, that's, the, word, that's the word he used. It's certainly very ambitious, and um, the plans that we've been working on, um, yeah, will be um, you know something that we I don't think we've ever seen before. We're going to have drop-in wickets, a completely relayed uh, outfield, um, and then purpose-built stands, so four giant stands along with four um, superstructures that will that will sort of host the teams in terms of dressing rooms and media facilities, as well as you know the VIP corporate um, suites and, and premium seating that clearly uh, in close proximity to New York and Manhattan will no, will no doubt be very, very popular um, as, as we look to host uh, six matches uh, in New York. So first time for, for New York to be hosting international cricket of this calibre. And again, a big statement for ICC in terms of trying to grow the sport into new markets. And we're hoping as a, as a game that we'll have further good news to come with um, cricket identified as a sport for the uh, 2028 Los Angeles Olympic Games. Yeah, uh, I know, Johnny, that St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada and Jamaica did not submit bids 
to host the T20 World Cup next year. I, I think most glaringly, um, the, the non-submission of a bid from Jamaica, a regional powerhouse in cricket, First of all, as the Cricket West Indies CEO, how disappointed are you that a bid did not come from Jamaica? Yeah, look, I'm not going to lie. I'm hugely disappointed. Um, you know, it's, as you say, Jamaica is the biggest country in the region. It's, you know, Savannah Park is an iconic ground. Uh, it's desperately in need of, of improvements and, um, and upgrades that, that will maintain its status as an international venue. Um, so the, to, to lose that opportunity to make those upgrades to Sabina Park on the back of hosting this huge event and for Jamaica government not to put forward any submission at all is, um, yeah, very disappointing. Um, we were in you know, very close dialogue with St Kitts and Nevis and, and also Grenada, um, who, who have obviously hosted lots of international cricket recently. We've continued to take international cricket to Jamaica over the years and, um, yeah, very disappointed that... Sabina Park isn't, uh, didn't even have the opportunity to host matches. Yeah. Has Cricket West Indies, I mean, reached out to the Jamaica Cricket Association or the Jamaican government in any way to get an idea of the challenges and why a bid was not submitted? Yeah, we certainly tried. I mean, we extended the deadline three times to hoping that Jamaica would um, be able to submit a, a bid. We, we know it was and we're told it was being discussed at Cabinet, but we've never had any feedback as to why a bid wasn't coming. You know, this is probably the biggest event, um, sporting event that the, the West Indies will ever host. Um, it's going to be watched by hundreds of millions of people around the world. Uh, we're going to own that month in June in, in terms of sporting calendar. I think the tournament budget alone is going to be in excess of 100 million US dollars. So it's a, it's a massive economic opportunity for the host countries and for the region to promote itself for tourism and economic development to the world. So it's, um, it's disappointing that um, we didn't get a bid from Jamaica, but at the same time, you know, we're delighted that we've got, in some respects, it made our decision making easier because the seven bids that we did receive have all got games. So no one's, no one's too disappointed. <laughs> well, that is a fact. Um, um, can you give us an idea of what the marketing of this event will be like now, um, now that the host nations have been decided between now and the World Cup what will the marketing look like? Yeah, the ne next sort of big landmark uh, for us is, is announcing the match schedule. And that's what all the fans want to know. They want to know where their teams are going to be playing and, and how they can come and watch and follow uh, and experience, particularly for us in the Caribbean, you know, what we believe is the best place to watch and play, play cricket in the world. So as soon as that match schedule is signed off, and we're, as again, that's another big decision that the ICC board will sign off on in mid-November, along with the tournament budget, uh, we would then hope that by the end of November, we are announcing that match schedule. So almost immediately, once the 50 over World Cup in India is completed, we'll announce the match schedule and then very quickly be on sale with, with all the opportunities for fans in the West Indies and fans from all around the world to, to come and watch games. Yeah, quickly before we go to break, Johnny, there was a time maybe a decade ago where it was my understanding that the Cricket West Indies, or at the time it was West Indies Cricket Board, had been mandated by the ICC to be uh, the, the, the governing body that would assist with the promotion and development of cricket in the Americas, like the USA, Canada, and you know the South American countries that play ICC lower level cricket. Does, does that mandate still exist? It's not a specific mandate. Obviously, we're the only full member in the ICC Americas region, and we take that role very seriously. Mm -hmm. Growing the sport in this time zone is a major component of our strategic plan. Uh, because it's it's effectively the only way that we're going to be able to compete economically um, with our counterparts around the world who are enjoying you know billions of dollars of revenue. Um, so it's it's a really important responsibility that we have to grow the sport in the ICC Americas region, both north in terms of the USA and Canada, and also as you say, uh, the growing sport uh, throughout Central America and South America, which is. Which is, which is growing both from a, a men's and women's perspective. So hopefully this is a really important uh, opportunity and platform for Cricket West Indies in particular as part of the sort of the legacy of this event to ensure that we're doing all we can to, to get cricket growing um, throughout the ICC Americas region. But we don't have a specific mandate, um, but it's certainly a, one that's the full member in the region we take very seriously.
Yeah, sounds good, Johnny. Hold it right there. We go to a break. When we return, we'll be chatting about the Super 50 that's coming up. <laughs>